Um, I am Numa from Hitotsubashi University, and to all the winners, I would like to congratulate you on your achievement. And from my side, I would like to um, share with you um, the profit rate analysis of the winners. Now, um, what's unique about the Porter Prize is uh, that um, it's not just the result of high profit, but instead um, the originality of their strategy that led to that good result. Uh, but um, as uh, Mr. Besho or Mr. Be Okada mentioned, PBR um, and also the profit margin um, is uh, something where we see a reflection of this original strategy. But, um, the four winners, of the four winners, three, Iris or Yama is not a listed company. So um, uh, there is no financial analysis, um, but as uh, Mr. Besho has mentioned, over the past six months, um, TSC, um, um, at the end of March, um, it, they issued their PBR paper, and um, many companies are disclosing the MBO, Taisho Pharmaceutical, Benesse, as uh, such um, uh, companies which are trying to delist. Now, why um, does uh, Iris Aoyama opt to not be listed. The current chairman is saying that um, if they were to do IPO, um, of course, um, uh, they can um, try to um, be um, benefit um, the investors, uh, but at the same time, uh, they would have to uh, try to change uh, the foundation's um, spirit of the company, the founding spirit of the company. And um, in our first screening and second screening of the prize, we look into the consistency of the strategy the company holds. I think uh, that um, deciding not to be listed, um, and this again is something uh, that which reflects um, the consistency of Oyama's strategy. Meanwhile, the listed companies um, and also, um, it could be that a company um, with, whose parent company is listed, um, um, and, um, that is uh, Jinushi, BizReach, um, and Unicham in itself is listed, but the PBR is above one fold. And the TSE and, um, and also METI's analysis say that um, the fact that there are many um, companies which, whose PBR is below one fold is a problem. It's not just the numbers, uh, but um, there are few companies which have a more than two-fold PBR in Japan. BizReach or Visual, um, it, it, PBR is about eight folds. Unicharm also is 4.2 folds. Um, so um, we see that they have a very high PBR. So we're not just looking at uh, the result, the profitability or PBR, that's not our yardstick, uh, but instead we look at the strategy. And I think strategy um, does lead to these financial results. I hope that you understand that. And I hope um, that uh, you understand through my presentation. And to the extent possible, why? Um, are these companies appraised is something I would like to communicate to you. Now, our screening standard, I mean, our first screening, we look at um, profitability and um, also uh, the value being offered with originality, consistency of their strategy, and innovation that supports their strategy. This is ROA and ROS. In the second stage of screening, uh, we look at um, the efficiency of capital and uh, the originality of value chain trade-off and the fit between different activities. Quantitatively, this would be ROIC. Well, uh, recently, over the past year especially, we see uh, that people are focused on ROIC. And um, many companies are introducing ROIC as a management benchmark or matrix. And from this perspective too, um, so in other words, looking at um, their performance from a financial perspective, they are performing extremely well. And um, Jinushi, and from here and after, on the left-hand side, I'll show the ROIC, um, and on the right-hand side will be the ROS. And um, for each of the winners, I'll show the position, and also um, uh, the upper quartile, median, and lower quartile. And again, you will see 
and then in case of Jinyu sheep, um, the um, operating profit margin is very high, the ROS. Next, BizReach. BizReach, again, you see that the ROIC and ROS are showing very high numbers. Well, Kusunoki-san uh, will uh, talk about the originality of BizReach's strategy, so that will be explained in detail later. Uh, but one thing I want to draw your attention to is that the ROS of BizReach is increasing year on year. So what I feel um, is unique about this is that business, BizReach's business model, it's a multi-site platform. In other words, there's a client and user, and they're offering this platform. That is my understanding. Now, this platform in the middle. In the past, um, companies like Recruit, and this was done analog. So they had this analog approach. In the case of Recruit, they have um, this um, Japan model. And um, well, and this platform um, is uh, being taken up by many companies, but when it comes to digital uh, platform, it is very easy for anyone to build, and it's difficult to generate profit from here. For example, a typical platform example, Uber or Lyft. So Uber, Lyft, looking at the profit, um, you see the numbers, Uber. Um, and they have um, a revenue of um, $31.8 billion, uh, but um, the net loss is $9.1. And um, also, um, Lyft, um, their revenue is uh, $4 billion, but the net loss is $1.5 billion. So uh, they are generating revenue, but they're not making money. This is because... And this business model lacks originality. Anyone can enter this business and the users, the customers, or taxi drivers too. The switching cost is low. For example, those people who use Uber or Lyft, using their app, um, um, I think um, many users are using both apps, and they have both apps installed on into their iPhone. And users really are not particular about using either Uber or Lyft. So, and from a business model or strategic point of view, there is little originality, and it's easy to copy. And users and clients can switch easily switch from one to the other. So um, it looks like a glamorous business, uh, but in terms of the profit ratio, um, they're not making any money whatsoever. But BizReach, when I first heard about their business model, I thought it might be difficult for them to generate profit. And I look for their originality, what's unique about their business. But BizReach, you see the ROS is growing sharply, and it seems that they have this originality, unique approach model that is difficult to emulate. And I believe uh, Sung Noki-san will talk about this in more in detail. Next, Unicharm. Unicharm. Again, if you look at um, the ROS, it's very high. Unicharms, what's unique about um, Unicharm and what's um, their strength and capability? Again, I would like to leave this uh, to Professor Kusunoki. Um, but uh, from the financial perspective, what I'm focusing on in Unicharm is this. Um, so it gives the total um, net sales, um, domestic versus overseas. The Japanese, come, the Japanese market, we are seeing the market shrinking due to aging of society. Everyone knows this, but 
um, when you want to expand overseas, there are a few companies which have managed um, to increase the ratio of overseas sales while generating a high profit. I think Unicham um, outperforms others. And, and um, so uh, when the current president became president, um, I think um, the overseas sales was about 30 billion, um, but now it's about uh, 600 billion. So, um, and um, domestic sales, um, net sales is increasing, but the overseas sales is overwhelmingly high and growing. Well, um, uh, there are different com countries, markets overseas. There's a difference in preference. I'm curious to know how he tried to meet these different needs of different markets overseas. So with this, I would like uh, to conclude my analysis of uh, the profit ratio. And once again, congratulations to all the winners.